everyone. Welcome to the Adopt a Species Laboratory. My name is Corey Bowditch with Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. And I'm Matt Farrell with the Helena Lewis and Clark National Forest. And welcome to your Adopt a Species Virtual Assembly. Okay, let's get serious here. All right. So, Corey, you're a scientist. I'm a scientist. We know what adopt a species is. But do they know what adopt a species is? Well, adopt a species is a, a habitat, habitat education, education program. program. For nearly 30 years, students just like you have been learning all about Montana's animals and the habitats that they rely on. Okay, Corey, so I, I'm a super big brain, smart, giganto brain science guy, and I know all about habitats. But just in case they don't know what a habitat is, would you break it down for them? Sure, come with me. A habitat is an animal's home where they can find everything they need to survive. Every animal needs four things in their habitat. They need food, water, shelter, and space. All right, Corey, I'm gonna level with you. I'm not actually a scientist. Hmm, you don't say. In fact, almost everything I know about animals and their habitats, I, I've learned from reading books like this. But you know what I've been wondering lately is, how do scientists know what to put in these books? I mean, like this book about lynx. It, it says in here that lynx are excellent climbers. I've never even seen a lynx. How could they possibly know that? Yeah, me neither. Now that you say that, what about this book on loons? It says right here, loons often catch fish underwater and swallow them whole while underwater. How do they know that? Are they swimming around looking at loons? You know, Corey, I think I know what we need to do. What? We need to find some real life scientists and figure out how they know what they know. Ooh, that's a great idea. But Matt, where are we gonna find real live scientists? Adopt the Species Laboratory, this is a live scientist. Come outside, I've got something to show you. Let's go! Hey, Amber. Whoa, you two scared me. You know you should really make more noise out in bear country. Do you at least have your bear spray? Yes, yeah, sorry about that, but we do have our bear spray. Oh, good. Okay, Amber, so you're a bear scientist. You study really big, really intimidating, sometimes dangerous animals. How do you do that safely? Well, it's pretty cool, actually. We collect hair like this or like this off these barbed wire setups. Bears like to do a lot of rubbing on trees, and they even climb in between and underneath these barbed wires. We can collect this hair and use it to identify individual bears and even family bear history. Whoa. Wait a minute. You said family of bears? Do bears have family trees? Oh, you bet they do. So, let me show you. This is 770's bear history. He was king of the cabinets. Whoa, way cool. If you don't get any hair, is there any other ways you can study bears? Definitely. We can put radio collars on bears and track their locations. Whoa, that's really cool. The species team, I caught a big one. <gasps> we gotta go. Thanks, Amber. See you later. Okay, so we learned how scientists can track big animals like bears, but they couldn't do that with fish, right? They've got to be guessing about what they're up to. Definitely. Yeah. Believe it or not, we can actually track and monitor fish. Fisheries biologists can use tags like these. Whoa, so how do those tags work? Great question, Corey. We take a fish like this one, and we can place the tag in front of the dorsal fin. That's this top fin right here. And if we have computers, we can uh, track and monitor them depending on the tag. What about if someone catches a fish? Oh, like right here, oh, let's get our nut. Okay, like this fish, oh, it has a Floyd tag. So you can call that number on there. What's that number, Corey? Okay, Matt, it looks like you caught fish number HO28 
1-800-242-4458. Whoa, okay, you can call us. Tell us where you caught it so we can see where they've traveled and tell us how big it is so we can see how much they've grown. Wow, well, we better report this. You caught a pretty big one. That's the species team. You'll never guess what we caught on camera. <gasps> Look guys, we caught mama cub and grizzly on the trail camera. This is not an animal I would want to run into in the wild. Wow, you guys took that photo yourselves? You're very brave. No, we use a trail camera. A trail camera is a camera you put on a tree and you leave and it takes pictures and videos while you're gone. And if we hang lots of trail cameras and we leave them for a couple months, they take lots of pictures and videos without disrupting the natural behavior of the animals. Wow. Sometimes our cameras will catch elusive animals like a lynx or even this mountain lion. It will help us gather, gather data about more species that we might not know as much about. Wow, this is so amazing. What a flawless way to study animals. Um, I wouldn't say flawless. Uh-oh. Sometimes a tree will fall in front of the camera or grass will grow in front of it. I've even seen some where spiders will build webs so thick that the camera can't take a picture. Whoa, look, this elk spotted the camera. <laughs> He's giving us a good angle. Sometimes animals will get curious and will move or even chew on the cameras. Whoa. That's why we need multiple ways of monitoring them, like collecting hair samples or tagging them. Oh yeah, we learned about some of those methods. So, do you still have some cameras out? We do. Stay tuned to find out what we discover this season. Wow, well thanks guys. See you later. Bye. Wow, Matt, what an incredible day learning how much science and research goes into these books that we can then learn from. But you know, Corey, there's still so many animals that we don't know how they study. Yeah, how do scientists study salamanders? Or bats. Or bison. And that's what we want you to do. This year's Adopt a Species theme is... Caught, caught on, on Camera. camera. figure out how do scientists research and study your adopted species. You're going to study the scientists, research the researchers, and put it all together in an art and writing contest to teach us what you've learned. But you know, Matt, there's one animal I can't stop thinking about. What's that? Birds. Wouldn't they just fly away whenever a scientist tries to learn about them? Adopt a species team. Did someone say birds? I have some friends that might be able to help. Whoa, it sounds like we have one more scientist to meet. Stay tuned for the live assembly where you might get to meet a live animal. See you soon.